Hi, my name's Phil. And my name is Rob. And we've been mates for years. We've done loads of stuff together. All of which, mainly, have turned into chaos. But someone then suggested, why don't you do a podcast? That seemed like a good idea, didn't it? Really, really did. Then we realised neither of us have ever done one of those. So is this going to work? Well, we'll find out, won't we? Welcome to Two Pastors in a Pod. Don't raise your voice. Just and don't talk. interrupt me. Oh, well, I will interrupt you. That's no, what, you, but you that's can't what I do. me when I'm doing but stuff. But that's what I do. No, but you can't be you, doing that. You've known me 20 years. Yeah. I interrupt. But so you, you can't just... be interrupting me. Right. Are we ready to go with this podcast? Well. In actual fact, if this is recording, this is quite a good way to start. <laughs> right. So, don't interrupt me. I won't raise my voice. I won't raise my voice. Our producer is recording this. Right. I won't raise my voice. You don't interrupt. There's a, fir- there's a first time for everything. Right, okay, so here we go then. You're raising your voice. <laughs> Look, just... Nathan, he's raising his voice. Look, don't, don't report me to Sir. Okay. We, we, we just have to go... Anyway, first. we've started the right, podcast. Right, so this is it. This, is, this it. is what everybody's been waiting for. It is. Well, what you've been waiting for... <laughs> you've, have you not been so you, excited you've, by you've it? You've dragged me into this, but, you know, because you're my mate, and because we're in ministry and we, we seek to do what is right by the Lord, I'm here with you. In this podcast. So our audience who join us, we better explain who we are. Indeed. So I'm Phil. And I'm Rob. I have the better accent. That is debatable. This is an accent of heaven. As you can probably tell, we're from two different cities. Right. And we're also pastors because this podcast is called... Two Pastors in a Pod. In a Pod. And this is a very nice pod. This is your shed at the bottom of the garden. <laughs> it is our shed and at the bottom of the is, garden. It's, it's, a, it's the very best that we can it's do. It's a very nice So tell me a bit about your city. What makes your city better than my city? Well, Liverpool. Yeah. Okay, so have you got an hour? No. So the football team is the first thing that comes to mind. Although Everton are am, an amazing team. I am aren't they? still in mourning. Not Everton. Oh, not Everton. I, I am still in mourning because Jurgen has announced his resignation. Oh, shame, but anyway, no Liverpool. I I was born way back in the sixties, um, and uh, I went to school, comprehensive school, uh, great city. Went to scouts, did all that, all. That, Usual stuff, but Liverpool is such a, a friendly city. So I grew up being very friendly because you know I am I am quite friendly, aren't but, I? But and that's, that's debatable. The, see, because when I go to London, yeah, and I go on the tubes, tube, yeah. nobody even dares look at you. But in Liverpool, yeah. they'll talk to you anywhere, anytime about anything. That is probably true because meanwhile they're picking your pockets while they're at it. So, <laughs> oh, you're so gonna, if any scousers listen to this, you are going to get so you you. He's going to be in trouble. But London, London is where the royals hang out. We've got stuff there you haven't got in Liverpool. The we've world. got smog. We've we've got Boris bikes. We've got all sorts of things in London you haven't got. So I'm quite happy with my city. So you're happy with so your which, city. Which part of London are you from? South East London originally, uh, which is the proper bit of London for anyone who's so who you, doesn't. Know. You grew up there. Yeah, grew up in a, in Plumstead, Woolwich, Greenwich, uh, down in 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 South East London, just down down by the Thames. Really. Okay. Did you go so, to church there? Yeah, we used to go up to a church. See, uh, we come from slightly different backgrounds. So my background tends to be uh, that I had Christian parents and I was taken along. Uh, to church quite regularly. In fact, I was taking four times a day at one point. Four, four times, four times a, a day. day. Uh, and uh, so we went down there. Well, you stand. Um, well, do you know what? Well, I, I, I don't believe that. Do you know why? Because why? you should be really, really holy now. I tell you and what. I know that is definitely not the case. <laughs> no, I mean, even though you're a pastor. Uh, listen, we've been we've known each other for far too long to do that. <laughs> but we have got a lot in common. You're we're, right. We're pastors, we're which not. which is true. Um, I mean, uh, we we get on quite well together. Which is, which is great. Occasionally. Which is great. But we have got a passion. We've got a passion, haven't we, for um, making Jesus known, not kind of abstract in a religious way, because I don't know about you, I don't do religion. I'm pretty sure you don't do religion. But we make Jesus known in a particular way, don't we? That's well, one think, of the things we want. Well, I think we we like to think of ourselves as ordinary blokes. Well, yeah. At least one of us is, anyway. Yeah. And, and and we have just a... We're, we're ordinary people, um, just like anyone. Joe Bloggs in the streets. But with a faith, and yeah. that's, that's the difference. We, we, you know, ordinary, ordinary fellows who who have a faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. For me, that wasn't always the case. But no. maybe I'll get into telling. Well, my story. we'll talk about that a little bit later. I mean, why are we doing a podcast? What's the point of a podcast? Well, we want to reach out. We just want to encourage people in their walk of faith. We're, yeah. we're, we're going to be interviewing a few people along the along the way. We might even get our 
producer who stood behind the camera over there. We oh, might, what, what we, the, we Nathan, might, the producer, Nathan, the producer, who's supposed to be keeping us in line and yeah, keeping us yeah. organised. So, so we'll be interviewing a number of interesting folk and Nathan at some point. <laughs> But we're also going to touch on some really serious stuff, yeah. aren't we? Yeah. I mean, we, there, there, there's some serious subjects we want to debate, we, we want to find out what the Bible says, because the Bible addresses yeah. the, the stuff that we're going to talk about and, and the serious nature of life. And how often are we going to be doing this? How well, often are you going to be dragging, dragging me down to the shed at the bottom of your garden? Well, listen, I think we at least have got to do this. This is only a pilot. We've got to see where this works. See, if nobody's listening... Well, at least it's just our missus listening. It might not be worth it. <laughs> My missus probably won't listen. <laughs> of course she will. She loves the sound of your voice. No, she um, doesn't. <laughs> but ultimately, every every couple of weeks, we'll, we'll do a podcast. We'll do something a little bit different. Yeah. Um, but uh, some of the things, let me ask you a question. What would you say is your favourite drink? If you could choose a drink, what's your favourite drink? Well, I like coffee. So okay, right. like my routine. Are you a coffee snob? Uh, do you only like the top end stuff? Do you know what? I think over the years I've I have developed a a posh taste for for coffee. I like to have decent coffee. Oh, so if classic. that what if that makes me a snob, well I'll I'll take that. I'll okay. Take, I'll so you're a coffee snob. I, I like tea. You do. Now one of the things that I want us to do on it and we're gonna do on our podcast is we're gonna have a cup of tea at every podcast we do. Hang on. What? So, I like coffee. Yep. And you like tea. Exactly. So, we're having tea. Yeah, I know, because there are 500 Stop, different teas in the world. Oh, so, we're going to okay. try them. It's a really selfless thing to do. I know. And we're going to rate, so we're going to rate what the tea is. So, I've brought one with me. Um, we're yeah. going to make it down here. Uh, so, so, I pre-prepared it. And we're doing this... Every single week. Yeah, and it's going to be a different tea. So you've got to guess what sort of tea it is. Um, right. And uh, once you've decided... Are we going to give Nathan the producer a cup? Uh, probably not, because we've only got two cups on here. Got two, so, two posh cups. As already. you can see already, my very posh teapot. That's a bit pink. It is. It's kind of pink. So just looking at the colour, what, what, do you, what cup of tea do you reckon it is? Pink. <laughs> it's not pink tea, is it? Well, rose hip. Rose it. You reckon it's rose it? Well, it does. You're right in as much as it doesn't involve milk. Did you know that the average person has four to five cups of tea? This is a fruit tea. So what I'm going to do, we're going to pour it. We'll decide whether it rates highly it's a or not. Fruit tea. Not, it is a fruit tea. And it's not fruit tea. It's fruit tea. It is fruit tea. And it don't want to pour out more tea. You didn't brew it for very long, did you? No, I didn't. So I'm not really going to Because we're only here for half an hour, aren't we? So do I have to swill it round in my mouth and then... Spit it back in. And then spit it out from (laughs) here. Nathan, come here. I'm not sure sure that's a great idea. Come on in. So um, you might not get a lot. What do you reckon? Guessing at it. What's in it? (laughs) It is not rosy. It's pink. Mm. What do you reckon on that? I'm getting hints of... Of what? Nothing. <laughs> Just water. It, it might be needed it's, to bring it in it for a while. <laughs> you know, on the next podcast, yeah. could we maybe pour it at the start and then... What, and then do it? You meant to let it, you meant to let it brew. It <laughs> says on the packet three to four minutes. Well, yeah. you left it for 30 seconds. That is so you. What? You're like, you've got to get it done straight away. <laughs> listen, like, listen, there's no point naming about it. So you can't guess what that is. You ain't got a clue. But I'm trying. I'll give you. I'll give you a clue. Part of it is ginger. Didn't get any ginger. Part of it is orange. No. But what makes it go purple? It's pink. It's purple. It's pink. Here it is. Go on then. It is beetroot tea. Beetroot. Tea. This is beetroot tea. Right. And when it, when it's stewed a bit longer, it is very good for you. It gives you lots of vitamin B something. Sounds good. So. So Although you can't taste it. So I'm going to be... Healthy. What do you reckon? I'm going to be healthy today. Well, yeah, no, it's got a nice colour, but it, it would help if you brewed it. We brewed it a little bit longer. So, so we, it, where would you rate it out of 10? First, well, it's difficult, isn't it? First podcast, and you mess it up, don't you? <laughs> you mess it up. It'll get better so, next time. So I'd have to give it a... a what, what we're doing? Out of 10. Out of 10. So I'd have to give it a... For the brewing technique... So it's all down to the maker. It's not down to the maker, it's down to the taste. Well, I'd, because it's beetroot, which is really good for you, because yep. it's ginger, really good, and because it's orange, I'll have to give it a higher rating because it's healthy. Okay, what would you give it? Seven. A seven? Seven! Blimey, you're setting that up. <laughs> Nathan's just had his ear holes blown out. <laughs> Sorry, um, so, um, but a seven, that's a long way up. Now, I like this stuff. In fact, 
I, I quite love this. I reckon we're going to have some teas that I okay. loathe, but I love this one. Anyway, so we need to move on. So, like, so love. People aren't here to hear about tea. your thing about tea. Well, we'll talk about it next time. So oh, love. Incidentally, talking about, oh, love, yeah, what's talking about love, you're married to tea. I am indeed married to tea. Uh, what's, we, a, what's her real name? A Therese. Therese. It, it's French, and she was named after one of her dad's girlfriends, which wasn't helpful. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but everyone calls her tea. Uh, we've been married 36 years. How long have you been married? And you're madly in love, aren't you? Of course I am. I've been married... You didn't tell me you are going to ask me <laughs> I've been married 1987, so what's 1987? Well, don't ask me to do the maths. 2024, oh, 36. Oh. Coming up to 37 because it was September 1987. Right. So. 37 years. And what else is happening this month that you must celebrate because you've been married that long? Um, it's February, isn't oh, it? Oh, so it's Valentine's. So, oh, right. Valentine's well, Day. Of course it is. So, of so course how, it is. How do you celebrate that? Well, do you know what? I think after 37 years, probably 40 years I've known I've known Jill, um, she's got used to our Valentine celebration. <laughs> Which is? <laughs> Not today. <laughs> no, 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 but no, no, I, I, I do. Every day is a Valentine's Day, isn't it? Oh, so, so, stop so it. I do occasionally buy Jill some flowers. Well, well I looked up. Do you, I buy, looked do you up. buy your wife some flowers? I tend to buy her more practical things. Um, but I, in recent days, I've bought her some flowers. Oh, yeah. But did you know... They reckon yeah. that blokes spend more money on Valentine's Day than, than women. Go on, How much do you reckon a bloke spends? Well, if I'm anything to go by, not a lot. <laughs> no. Not a lot. But five. Okay, so ready for this. The average man in Britain last year spent £44 on his beloved one uh, for Valentine's Day. How much do you reckon? 44 quid. How much do you reckon a woman spent? It's got to be more. 26 quid. Really? 26 quid. I thought the, the, the ladies were more romantic than the fellas. Clearly. But not. I am romantic. See, I do buy my wife flowers. So, But you know the best time to buy flowers? Where's it? Um, during the Valentine's period. Yeah, where's it? The day after. Yeah. Because if you go to Asda or you go to any any of the supermarkets, the day after, the roses yeah. are half price. And do you know... So that's a tip for everyone out there. Do you know... Because you know every day... Is a Valentine's Day, not just February the 14th. Do you know the best place to buy? The petrol station. Because they're even cheaper than, <laughs> than Asda or Morrison's or any other supermarket. Yeah, they're so speaks, there you go. They're they're the, experience. The, the voice of experience. So Valentine's Day is all about love. How did you propose to your missus? Oh, you you set me up for this one, haven't you? So um, back in the day, you didn't do all this rigmarole, did you, of, of filming it and, um, you know, setting it all up, going on TikTok. to the, going to these exotic places and getting down on one knee, making sure that somebody was filming it. Didn't do any of that. So back in the day of Basildon Bond, do you remember Basildon Bond? Yeah, it's probably beyond my It's feet. a bit of paper. Oh, right. It's Basildon Bond, you oh, know, right. le letters and stuff. I wrote Jill. I was living in South Wales and she was living in Liverpool and I wrote her a letter. Uh, and it was a letter that says... What do you think then? Should we get married? So was it? A, so I proposed <laughs> in a letter. So was it a pleading letter? Or was it a begging letter? <laughs> so you proposed to your missus via a letter, I suppose. a begging letter. Yeah, it was a love letter. Uh -huh. I've got the, the archetypal love letter. So I sent it to her, let it get there. The postal system was a lot better in those days. <laughs> so I got there probably the next day and, uh, and then I rang her up. Did you? I did and I said... Was that on a payphone? I said, did you get me a letter? Yes. How about it then? And yeah. so that's how that's how that's how we. Oh, you are an incredible just, romantic. Just so so romantic. Incredible. Do you want yeah. to hear how I proposed? Yeah, go on. So down in Woolwich. I don't know why I'm drinking. Oh, it's all right. It's, it's, it's okay. It's, it's there. Go on. So down in Woolwich, Italian restaurant, dozen red roses, one knee, in the middle of the restaurant, bang on, proper proposal. I don't know what I would have done if she'd said no. <laughs> but yeah. What, you actually paid for the meal? Or did you get her to pay? <laughs> or, or did you... Or did, or, or did you did you go arms because it was your... You know, did you, hey, listen, you we didn't go Dutch. I paid. <laughs> I, I did pay it on that occasion anyway. And uh, the roses were, were not from a petrol station. So love, it's a really important thing, isn't it? Do you know, the Bible's got loads to say about love. It does indeed. Uh, so when you talk about love, yeah. For me, at least, from from what I understand about the Bible, that that love, true love, is always a two way thing. Yeah. You know, with with those around us. But when it comes to loving God, it's it's really a two way um, 
relationship. Yeah. Uh, and that's how I understand love. But that's quite different to what we see today. Well, well, the Bible says that we love because he first loved us and we are we are the image bearers of God. But in our world, we, we just don't see that anymore. People don't reflect their lives towards God or, or allow God to reflect his image in, in, in ourselves. So we have forgotten, I think, the true essence of love, we we have without, without doubt. You know, the Beatles wrote a song in nineteen sixty. I'll trust you to bring the Beatles in. You know, you know I had to get. You know, I had to get the Beatles in. In nineteen sixty seven, they they wrote, and you can finish this off. All you need is, uh, let me guess, love, love, and then it goes. Da, 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 da. Does it? But but I reckon, I reckon they they had some sort of teaching when they were kids about the Bible because. That's basically what yeah. the Apostle Paul used to say. How many weddings have you you, have you taken? I've got to be honest. Um, someone asked me this the other day. I, I've done weddings in all sorts of places, hospitals and double weddings and all sorts of weddings. But I couldn't tell you exactly how many weddings that I've done. But normally, oh, it often turns who, out... Who, who forgot to switch? Is, is, that would be me. So what's, what's the headlines oh, on the BBC? I have absolutely no idea what the headlines are on the BBC. Do you know, right every, the everyone out there in this podcast needs to know <laughs> that you never... Ever switch your phone off, so we can be going on a, on a on a pastoral yeah. visit. We can be we could and it, it could be a serious pastoral yeah. visit. Someone could be could be really ill, and and we're praying, and then all we hold and we hear and your little news news it's because I like to make sure that I know what's going on. So but, at these weddings, so let's get back, back to these weddings. Yeah, back to the, so, back, to the back, weddings. Back to love. Back to love and these weddings. Um, I don't know. One of the passages in the Bible that we often use, and lots of people use, is 1 Corinthians 13, yeah. where Paul talks about love. But it's not just for weddings. No, I, I mean, that passage has got a lot more kind mm. of connotations to everyday life. I, I always ask people, you know, how do, how would they define love? If they had to write a sentence, and maybe those who are listening, if you, you could just take five minutes <clears throat> away from this podcast after we finish the course and just to write down what you think love is and, and and how you would define it. What is the the essence of love? I wonder what people would say. But you know, we don't have to go very far because it is in yeah. that passage that you referred to. Yeah. Then. It's in, in one Corinthians thirteen. Again, you know, often quoted at, at weddings. But it's it just defines what yeah. love is because we are the image bearers of God's love, yeah. even though we're, we're tainted uh, by by sin. But we are meant to carry the torch of love into this world. So, do you want me to read it to you? I'll read out what you've got there. And what we'll do, we'll, we'll see how we match up to that. Okay. So, so this is in 1 Corinthians 13, and I'll just read from verse 4. I'm reading from the English Standard Version. Okay. Just, just people out there, maybe you want to know that. So, the English Standard Version says this, Love is patient. Right, let me stop there. <laughs> <laughs> Let me let me stop there. You see, I was I was preaching on Sunday about love. Good, because we're in. I was in, over in Liverpool at my my old church at Bethel, and um, and and we had to leave from Ellesmere, which is where I live, to drive over to Liverpool, which is about an hour or so. So we had to set off fairly early. So I said to Jill, my wife, who was obviously going to accompany me on the journey, I said, "Be there in the car for nine o'clock." Right. Yeah, fine. She says. Anyway, I'm sat in the car. Nine o'clock. Sat in the car, five past nine. Right. Still no sign of Jill. Okay. Sat in the car, seven or eight minutes past nine, she eventually comes out. Now, we're on a critical time path here. And I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> love. I'm yeah. preaching on love today. So so I was thinking, love is patient. So I was saying it to myself, I was like a mantra, love is patient. Love is patient. So I'm love assuming... Is, hello, love, you got in the car? <laughs> I'm assuming when she got in the car... seven minutes late, then are you? Tell me when you got in the car. She, she got in, you went, do you know, your hair looks beautiful, your makeup's <laughs> just right, you look absolutely gorgeous. I said, I love you, darling. <laughs> oh, yeah, I bet you did. Love is patient. <laughs> anyway, so there you go. Love is patient and it's kind. Yep. You know, just like you bringing those roses, but it's it's in all sorts of different aspects of yeah. kindness, isn't it? Love doesn't envy or boast. It's it's not arrogant. It's it's not rude. It doesn't insist on its own way, like tea instead of coffee. Mm. It's it's not, it, and this is a hard word for me. I can never say this word. It is not irritable, irritable, irritable. Do you know how irritable that is? <laughs> You couldn't say either. Do you want to say that fast? No, that's Irritable. Go on, say it. Irritable. Ir- what? Irritable. Yeah, oh, very good. Ir- very irritable good. or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. 
endures all things. I tell you what, I do hope our editor's going to be good at this. Love is patience. I'm really it's patient. You know, the first time it went off, did you not think to switch it off by the time I turned? We would have been see, done. See, there could be a world crisis. We could be getting news feeds all the time. We could do. Look, I've just got it on my phone, right. but my phone has remained on silence. I see. Yeah. So anyway... <laughs> Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. And love never comes to an end. And, and then, it, hang on, I haven't finished yet. Okay. And then, at, at the end of that passage in verse 13, he says, So now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, but the greatest of these is love. That is so different to the way the world works, isn't it? Yeah. If you look at our society, how, how we deal with things, how we hold resentment, but that can happen amongst Christians as well, can't it? Yeah, it, it, can. it uh, can. And and how how do we deal with that? How do we handle that love side of things uh, when there are those who particularly, you know, aren't particularly loving towards us? Yeah, well, I think that for me as a, as a pastor, um, we're often dealing with with wonderful situations, but there are occasionally some thorny situations that we have to deal with. So there we do need to 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 think about how we love the unlovely sometimes yeah. because people people can be people like us you and I we're, we're sinners and we can often wind each other up so in my experience the best way to to be loving in a situation like that uh, with, with Christians is to go back to the scriptures mm. you know every day to remind ourselves of of who we are in Jesus Every day to remind ourselves of the good news and and reflect His love uh, and and how that should be. So we go to passages like this. We go to, which is why we have a communion. We go to the cross, and there we see selfless love. There we see sacrificial love. So, so we have to remind ourselves about the cross. Actually, that's a really important thing. I, I think it was uh, George Foreman. The, the, not, not George Clooney. Not George Clooney. George Foreman. You remember the the, the heavyweight boxing champion of the world? Yeah. Um, he has. He's a Christian. He has a faith. And I, I seem to remember reading somewhere that he talked about when God says you need to love those who are not loving towards you. Yeah. That's kind of out of step with normal thinking. Yeah. That he always goes back to what God has done for him yeah. and the fact that he loved him so much yeah. that he sent Jesus. So that's really important. It's not just for Valentine's Day, is it? No, it's not. And, and and we have to remember that, that we're called to love, aren't we? We're called yeah. to be his image bearers. So it's not just something that that we feel. It's something that is it is indeed an act of Yeah, there's know. a discipline to actually doing yeah. love. I mean, I have uh, to in that really way. work hard yeah. at loving me, mate, especially when he gives <laughs> me a half-brewed cup of... Cup okay. Of, Rose, no, but was it beetroot? Beet orange? Root. I do keep up with this thing. Oh, Listen, what we're going to do? I'm going to make sure that's right next time. Our time's run out, is so it? that's 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 the end of our first podcast. Is it? Uh, yeah. Can we ask our producer how long we've been on this now? About twenty minutes. Twenty minutes. You see, it's not bad run, then, is it? No, it's not for yeah. a pilot. So, um, folk can get the podcast uh, on Spotify or on any of the platforms they normally use. But there's also an email because we want people to talk to us, don't we? Uh, only if it's nice. Uh, oh, right. so, so, so because the, the first one is all about love, we expect any emails we get in to be loving. We don't want any hate mail, do we? But there's, that, a, there's enough of that out there in the world. But people can also send in their suggestions for tea. Wow. And we can work out what tea we can drink and we can rate that as well. Well, maybe we should have a vote. On what? Whether we have coffee or tea. No, let's not do that because that'll just add to confusion. You're not, you're not being very loving, I, are you? I'm doing my very best. I'm, cer- I'm certainly being very patient, that's for sure. You, you, uh, uh, so, so what kind of things? Okay, well, you tell me what because because you you dream you dream about this kind of thing, don't do you? Do I? So so tell me what kind of things we are going to be looking at over the over the weeks. Okay, we're going to be talking before to... Before we get closed down. <laughs> we're going to be talking to lots of people. So hopefully some of our guests that we'll have on, yeah. uh, we're going to talk about um, sport. We're going to talk about how Christians can often uh, get so engrossed in our sport that we, we prioritise that okay. over other things in our lives. Uh, we're going to listen to some people's stories yeah. about how they came to faith and what difference is. We're going to talk to one lady who is uh, cooks predominantly uh, vegetarian, who wants to talk to us about healthy living, you and me. That's going to be hilarious. Uh, well, we, we've got the orange and the ginger on the beef. We, 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 yeah. we have. We have. Well, 
we're going to talk to somebody about mental health, which is obviously a huge thing. Yeah. Um, and often that Christians don't don't understand necessarily yeah. whether that is a, a sin or something wrong or yeah. what the Bible says. We're going to have someone in on that. Yeah. And hopefully also we're going to have someone to come in and talk about um, dads uh, and uh, how dads can function better uh, with their wives and their kids and, and going forward. So there's a load of stuff going on. Yeah. Um, we've got lots of new guests coming in. So, so really, it's just a, a couple of friends who are Christian ministers who who are just talking about issues in life, yep. and, and, but but relating it to to our faith. So, hopefully, people will see that uh, it's not going to be too serious, is it? Not too serious. However, hopefully, there'll be a few takeaways. Like today's takeaway is what not the tea. Well, no, the takeaway is brew your tea a bit longer. T- today's takeaway is all you need is love and how to be loving. When sometimes people aren't so lovely, so just go to the scriptures and remind yourself of Jesus, because we're Christians and we follow after Him. So that's who we seek to behave like the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's quite a high bar that He set. He certainly has. Yeah, and we hope that you're going to join us next time on Two Pastors in a Pub. Indeed.